all right i'm back um so i know that uh hopefully this doesn't get recorded too loud at points but apparently the microphone's on sen sensitive at the moment maybe because of the way zoom is doing it and i got the background it's supposed to be a christmas background but it sort of <laughs> backfired a bit <laughs> and now uh, well you know i guess you can say that my computer is on fire I guess that's what's <laughs> that's what happens when your sermon is so hot, yo. Uh, as uh, Mike's church likes to say, it's also humble, open, and transparent. Anyways, let's uh, let's get right to um, reading Philippians. So basically, as you may have read in the comments, I'm a little busy these next two weeks. So I'm just going to do at least one or two, well, mostly just one, but I don't know. I, I Hopefully I will find time to do the Philippians one message and just have that for next Friday. So, um, but if not, it might be a little bit delayed. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're moving to Fridays now, just simply to just avoid any potential time conflicts. Because it doesn't seem like Thursdays is a good day for people, so... Uh, we might just go back to Saturdays as usual, but uh, well, we'll have to see. Uh, Fridays might actually be okay too, if, like, because at that time of the day, for some people um, in the world, it's already Saturday, so um, that might be a good time slot. So, don't know, you never know who's watching. Uh, sorry, the Bible is just kind of got wet or something the other day it's sort of anyways philippians and i'll just try to find a link to put in the description but this is actually the 1984 paper version philippians 1 paul and timothy servants of jesus christ to all the saints in Christ Jesus at Philippi, together with all the overseers and deacons, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanksgiving and prayer. I thank my God every time I remember you in all my prayers for all of you. I, will, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart. For whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer. That, you, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best, and you may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. Now I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has been cl c come clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. Because of my chains, most of the brothers in the Lord have been encouraged to speak the word of God more courageously and fearlessly. It is time that some preach Christ out of envy and... Sorry. It is true that some priests preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of good view, good will, the latter do so in love. Knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel, the former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely supposing that they can stir up tr tr trouble for me for while I am in chains. But what does that matter? The important thing is that in every way, from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. Yes, I will continue to rejoice. For I know that your, through your prayers and help given by the Spirit of Jesus Christ, 
What has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage, so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and I will continue with, with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith. So that through my being with you ag again and your joy in Christ, Jesus will overflow on account of me. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then whether I come to see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you, are, you stand firm in one spirit, contending as one man for the faith of the gospel, without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. This is a sign to, to them that they will be destroyed, but that you will be saved, and that by God. For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for him. Since you are going through the same struggle you saw, and now I hear that I still, and now hear that I still have. Imitating Christ's humanity. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being in one spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humanity consider yourselves, sorry, in humility consider yourselves better than your Blue, sorry. Two, three. Two colon, two colon three. Chapter two, verse three. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look only, not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Who, being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality of God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant. Being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place, and gave him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee sh should bow, in heaven on earth and un in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my dear friends, as ye have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but how much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you, to will and to act according to his good purpose. Do everything without complaining or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure children of God, without fault in a crooked and depraved generation, in which you shine like stars in the universe. As you hold out the word of life, in order that I may boast on the day of Christ, that I did not run or labor for nothing. But even if I am being poured out like a drink offering under sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice of all of you. So you too should be glad and rejoice of me. I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, that I may also be cheered when I receive news about you. I have no one else like him, who takes a genuine interest in your welfare, 
For everyone looks out for his own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know that Timothy has proved himself as a son with his father he has served with me in the work of the gospel I hope therefore to send him as soon as I see how things are going things go with me and I am confident in the Lord that I myself will come soon but I think it is necessary to send back to you Ephelodorus or Ephelodorus Tess, my brother, fellow worker and fellow soldier, who was also your messenger, whom you sent to take care of my needs, for he belongs for you, for all of you, and is distressed because you have heard he was ill. Indeed, he was ill and almost died, but God had mercy on him. And not on him, not on him only, but also on me, to spare me sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore, I am all the more eager to send him, so that when you see him again, you may be glad and may have less anxiety. Welcome him in the Lord with great joy, and honor men like him, because he almost died for the work of Christ, risking his life to make up for the help you could not give me. Fun. Um, free. So, number free. Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write the same things to you again, and it, and it is a safeguard for you. Watch out for those dogs, those men who do evil, those mutilators of the flesh. For we are circumcision, we who worship by the Spirit of God, who who glory in Christ Jesus, and who put no confidence in the flesh, though I myself have reasons for such confidence. If anyone else thinks he has reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law, a Pharisee. As for seal, persecuting the church, as for legalistic righteousness, faultless. But whatever for was, was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not only having not having a righteous of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death and so somehow to attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained all this, or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind, and straining towards what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me, heavenward in Christ Jesus. All of us who are mature should take such a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we already have attained. Join with others in following my example, brothers, and take note of, of those who live according to the pattern we gave you. For I have often told you before, and now say again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction, their God is their stomach, and their glory 
is in their shame. Their mind is on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Number four. Therefore, my brothers, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown. That is how you should stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. Exhortation. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I was going to skip these t um, section, chapter headings and stuff like that. I plead with Iodioa and I plead with Sanctum to agree with each other in the Lord. Yes, I ask you, loyal your fellow, help these women who have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition. With thanksgiving, present your request to God. And in the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have heard from me or seen in me and put into practice, or seen in me, put it into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. Thanks for their gifts. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you have renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you have been concerned, but you have no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need. For I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need. And I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, I can do everything through him who, gi who gives me strength. Yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, that the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia, not one church shared with me the matter of giving and receiving. Except you only, for even while I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid again and again when I was in need. Not that I am looking for a gift, but I am looking for what may be credited to your account. I have received full payment and even more. I am amply supplied now that you have received from effort. Ephrotus, the gifts you have sent, they are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. And my God will meet all your needs according to the glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet all the saints in Christ Jesus. The brothers who are with me send greetings. All the saints, all the saints send you greetings, especially those who belong to Caesar's household. Okay, since we're not quite at the half an hour um, mark, I'm gonna, I can briefly comment uh, about some of the chapters. Or, or the book uh, or Philippians itself as a whole and stuff like that um, 
even though you know 20 minutes is ideal for most of like i, I, I you know when i first started doing these videos 20 minutes is what i was kind of aiming for initially um so that's that um yeah i don't think if i close zoom which i'm using to get that background it would actually let me use the video camera because the quality is actually kind of horrible via zoom but anyways and this is uh you know like the uh paul says in this letter in corinthians i mean uh you see me only like a like in a mirror and blurry but uh, soon uh, soon you should see face to face um i did uh a few weeks ago i think before i did that message on romans i tried to um talk from philippians instead when i was like oh, okay you know um you know uh you know learning to be content in all circumstances and you know the gift of god or not sorry not the gift of god that's uh i got it mixed up uh but you know learning to be content in all circumstances and you know uh, the how you know the whether you're in rich or in poor or you know locked down or not locked down uh you know there's lots of stuff going on right now that i i had talked about that week before i lost the message due to technical errors um, actually, I've actually recently switched back to an older version of Snagit um, because I've been having some uh, technical issues with the new one. Um, so I apologize as well for some of my videos that you may have noticed that <laughs> even the one with Hebrews is totally missing the audio, um, which is like, okay, that's not really helpful. Um, but, uh, you know, maybe I'll work through my vocabulary and just do like a little mini paper after I do my other paper, my other papers through this week to... Um, Kind of just like do um a little review for myself because i got another one of those quizzes coming up so uh that's so that's that's that and um kind of add some of the new material as well if, like you know find a system for me to memorize some of the newer vocab uh well i guess i'll wrap this up for now uh another thing that i know about philippians is um it's they do obviously like they're written a slightly different times and slightly different audiences whatever um but it is part of like the uh, the small four package like uh the so just like the other um epistle so there's like you know ephesians or, or well i mean the order is galatians ephesians philippians and then colossians so even though i think it would make uh perfect sense for me to um, you know, um, you know, I skipped Galatians, but to also do a Colossians at some point after this, I don't necessarily have the access to a lot of commentaries or, but I have to, I can check out some of the online stuff that I have access to maybe over the holidays and see if that, you know, that's something that we could do. Um, but I don't know, like, uh, I think maybe some topical, uh, messages might be good. I mean, considering, you know, I got that counseling and spiritual care background, you know, especially with the month of February. Uh, maybe we can talk about, you know, uh, <laughs> we can talk about some relationships or something, you know, who knows, I don't know. Yeah, I can do the relationship series. Even, uh, it's, it's my gift to the world since uh, I've never celebrated Valentine's Day in my life, so, you know. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's my confession. Anyways. Uh, let me just quickly turn off this. I, I want to, before I stop recording, I'm actually curious to see how bad it looks without the background. So I'm going to disable that for a second. Yeah, so just a bunch of plop of white. <laughs> I guess if I can find another drape to, to do that, that, that desktop, then we can... Uh, you know, I guess especially like when we do Philippians 4 or 3, whenever the week of Christmas comes around, it actually looks proper, right? So, uh, you know, you can actually see the... Uh, but then I got to fix this corner as well. Um, but, um, you know, we can do something like that. Anyways, um, definitely, you know, definitely in the chat or the comments, whatever. If you got some questions on Philippians, you've always wanted answered, um, definitely post them um you know so that i can uh, uh, address them throughout the series but also doing this record re uh, re reading of all the uh, all of philippians is also to help you guys have that um you know the same thing with ephesians that you can uh, go through the the scripture for yourself and you know see what it means to you and you know 
um, to just do a little bit of um, like like I said in the Ephesian series, like a Berean type of study to uh, learn more about Scripture um, and see what you think. Because obviously, I'm not like the writer myself, and you know, it's like like I'm saying in my paper, right? It's like playing broken telephone, right? I can only give you my understanding of what that person was trying to say. I might have misheard a thing here and misheard a thing there, but it's it's like broken telephone, right? So hopefully nobody's well, actually nobody can see this in time to really steal it. But uh, but you know, but when it comes out on Friday, you know, it's, it's pretty late for that paper. I don't think anybody would hand in their paper on Friday, so they won't be able to see my idea that I'm using broken telephone metaphor. I'm sure that maybe some of them have used it anyways as well, but. Uh, but yeah, that's fine. <laughs> no plagiarism. <laughs> no, I don't think it's necessary plagiarism because I, I have a really unique way of explaining it. But let's hope that yeah, but it, that there's no suspicion of plagiarism, I guess. All right. Bye, guys.